Everything you know about Sun God Nika and the gum gum fruit have been a lie. Who's who is spilling all the beans to Jinbei and the readers? We know the Gomu Gomu no Mi was special enough for Cypherpole to guard it. And we know that Who's Who is a ticking time bomb of lore, giving us hints about Sun God Nika and the past. But did you know that this classified information that he has is outdated? CP0 slipped a hint in chapter 1018, and I'll explain. What changed? What's the secret of the gum gum fruit and Nika? Fate. Hey everyone, Golden Boy here. With all this talk about a legendary mystery devil fruit, there are many theories in the community that Luffy's fruit is not what it seems. I've heard of Sun Wukong, and I also saw a Threevils video on screen, which is a banger, go check that out. But I found something interesting on a Wano reread. CP0 accidentally slips out a big hint. In chapter 1018, the CP0 members are discussing what they should do with who's who, and they mention that the classified information that he has is outdated. So what exactly are they talking about? Who's Who explains that there's a legend of a figure that's freed slaves named Sun God Nika. He also explains that he was guarding the Gomu Gomu no Mi. So what's the deal? Which one is out of date? And then I got thinking, why not both? I think Luffy's fruit is special. And don't worry, just because his fruit might be special doesn't mean that he doesn't have to work hard. As we all know, but sometimes are afraid to admit, fate has a role in this series. Just because Luffy's the man that will become the Pirate King doesn't mean that he's lazy or that it's just going to be handed to him. He was called to it, and through his actions, he will achieve what he was born to achieve. He will bring the dawn of the new world. I feel confident to call Luffy Joy Boy. And I also feel confident that Nika was Joy Boy, because Nika freed slaves and brought laughter to them. So if Nika is Joy Boy, and Luffy is Joy Boy, then obviously, Luffy is Sun God as well. Luffy's the man that will free everybody, and I think that the telos, the end goal, the purpose of One Piece, is world peace. Whether that comes in the form of destroying the Red Line, or toppling Emu, or throwing the largest party in the world, or delivering Bink Sake, all of these are for the same telos, the same end, to bring world peace. The ultimate freedom Luffy could have is to be able to explore with no wars, to not worry about protecting his weaker allies on the other side of the world. For everybody to be at peace is the ultimate freedom. Ever since I read SBS 59, where Oda drew what was on each of the Straw Hats' minds, I knew what One Piece was really about. Because Oda drew himself. And the only thought recorded in his head? World peace. So if you want to argue and say that One Piece isn't a story about world peace, then I'm going to have to counter and say, actually, world peace is canon. Because according to SBS 59, the only thing Oda does, thinks, and cares about is bringing world peace. The dawn of the new world. This is Luffy's fate. Put simply, Joy Boy and Sun God are the same dude. Luffy will be Joy Boy, therefore Luffy will be the Sun God. But why is Luffy the Sun God? Why is Luffy Joy Boy? Is it because he works hard? Is it because he loves his crew? Is it because he believes in himself? Or is it because he is chosen? Fate has shed her light on Luffy time and time again. Those of the D are bound to a checkered fate. Just like Roger survived the Ed War thanks to the storm, Luffy survived his execution because of lightning. Whenever he seems down and out, he will always bounce back. This is not because of plot armor, it's because of fate. Even Whoop Slap is down for fate, so come on, let's just roll with it, okay? Luffy is fated to become the Pirate King and save the world as Joy Boy. This doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. No, no, no. It just means that he's special. Things go his way. He said it. He's lucky. He's chosen to be the Sun God. Some fun with phonics. Nika comes from the word Nik, which means chosen. A few weeks ago, with the release of Chapter 1037, everybody wanted to know the name of the mysterious legendary devil fruit that the Gorosei were discussing. Many people figured it was Luffy's fruit, and then a popular theory floated around just for a little bit that Luffy's fruit will be called the Nika Nika no Mi because of Sun God Nika, and there's also the straw hat number pun for devil fruit users, the rule of numbers. 
That way Nika would be 2-9. Nika, Nika no me. This might not necessarily mean it's the sun god, sun god fruit, but it might mean it's the chosen, chosen fruits. The fruit of prophecy. And Luffy is definitely a chosen. But I can explain why that's a good thing. To be chosen. It's more than just a cop-out. More than just plot armor. In religion, being chosen means being accepted. Being loved. God's chosen people. Being a member of a religious community because you have been chosen is pure. It's because no matter how strong you are or how weak you are, you are still worthy of love. You're still worthy of happiness. Everyone is chosen. Everyone is called to love. And through religion, ideally, the end goal would be world peace. Love. Bringing the world's people together, the power to unite. And the power to unite is what will free the world. Luffy has had fate watching over him, and it's why he survives. It's why he surpasses the odds, and why he comes out on top. It's why he brings people together. As Mihawk said at Marineford, Luffy's most dangerous ability is to bring people together. One by one, he turns the people around him into allies. He's a Christ figure. Luffy turns the whole world into believers. He convinces enemies to drop their weapons and party together, just like Skypiea. He ends conflicts. He brings about peace. Why is Luffy the only man that can unite the world? Because he works hard? Or is it because he's chosen? I think Luffy's devil fruit is the special devil fruit that the Gorosei were discussing. Think about it. The world government was willing to pay billions of berries for Law's fruits, and it can literally grant immortality. They only call on Cypherpole to guard the heavy hitters of the devil fruit universe. Luffy's fruit was guarded, and who's who, a top agent, was literally imprisoned. Luffy's fruit is at least as special as Law's Ope Ope no Mi, if not more. That's why in chapter 1041, the Gorosei decided that they must eliminate Luffy, even if it's just based on a hunch. The CP0 received a mission to eliminate Straw Hat Luffy. After discussing a legendary devil fruit, the Gorosei changed their target from Nico Robin, the only human alive that can read the Poneglyphs, revealing the true history of the world, to a new target, Monkey D. Luffy. And how did they even rationalize this? These orders are meant to prevent the worst case scenario, you understand, though it's a scenario that we only know through rumor and hearsay. What scenario? What are you talking about? Is it the awakening of the mysterious devil fruit that you were just discussing a couple chapters ago? You know, the one that you only know about through rumors and hearsay? This all but confirms it. Luffy's fruit is not the Gomu Gomu no Mi. It's changed. It's much more special. During his fight with Jinbei, Who's Who speaks of the Gomu Gomu no Mi being special, and Nika being a god figure that used to exist. But remember, the CP0 agents explain that his classified information is outdated. That's because Nika wasn't just a figure from the past, and the fruit isn't called the Gomu Gomu no Mi. It's the Nika Nika no Mi. Sun God Nika is passed down. Nik means chosen, as we discussed. And this chosen fruit isn't just a regular fruit. It might be the founding devil fruit, a god fruit, or at least the fruit of a god. The first fruit, perhaps, with the power to unite the world. Maybe even the power to do whatever you want. Forget King's Hockey, Luffy might fuck around this chapter and pop a gear fifth and unlock God's Hockey. Now, I know you might counter all of this with Golden Boy, you fucking donut. That's a nice religious dissertation you dropped on us, but he could stretch his arms. It's the Gomu Gomu no Mi. It's been since 97. Nice try. But my response to this is that the Gorosei discussed a rumor about the awakening of a legendary devil fruit that was renamed. Then they order CP0 to eliminate Luffy just in case the worst scenario might happen. Little sus. If you binge read Odingashima, there are signs that are developing that all point to Luffy's fruit being special. First of all, when Hyogoro first sees Luffy's gear fourth, he's in awe and he says he looks just like a wisdom king. And just like real life wisdom kings, Sun God Nika was depicted with flames surrounding his head. 
Up next, we also had the discussion with CP0 and how the Gomu Gomu no Mi was captured. And the only other fruit that was guarded by the government personally was that immortality surgery fruits, the one that the government was willing to fork out 5 billion berries for. The Gomu Gomu no Mi is obviously special and for some unknown reason. Up next, we have the Gorosei discussing that there's a mysterious devil fruit legend and it's been renamed. Yeah, sure, maybe it was Gomu Gomu no Mi since 97, but it's been renamed. There's a mysterious devil fruit legend that's been renamed. And then, Luffy was ordered to be eliminated, even if there's only a small chance that it will be awakened. And this arc has already showcased a couple of awakenings Luffy might be next. And finally, in the most recent chapter, 1042, Kaido was getting punched by Luffy and he even mentioned something. He said, how can he move like this? Rubber can't do that. Luffy's fruit is special. It's chosen. Think about it, why can Luffy even go into gear 4th? Is that something that Rubber can do? Rubber doesn't have gears. Sure, he stretches and he inflates his body, but like Kaido said in 1042, that's not something Rubber can do. You might not like to think so, but Hyogoro said that gear 4th is a wisdom king. This isn't a Rubber fruit, guys. Rubber can't do the things that Monkey D. Luffy can. What about the Red Hawk? Why is Luffy burning? Don't tell me it's because the friction burns him. I'm not buying it. Rubber doesn't burn like that. If you're gonna make a story about a rubber character, there are plenty of other power-ups that I'd give to him before I think to let him control fire. He could stretch to become a giant. He could shrink to become microscopic. He could reverberate and attack with sound. He could even change the shape of his body to mold spikes from himself. I don't know, not burst into flames. That's not a rubber ability. You know what bursts into flames? The sun. The sun god. Nika's chosen fruit, the god fruit. And this god's fruit grants the chosen user the ability to unite the world. So I ask you, what would you do if you had the power of a god? You could control it all. But Luffy doesn't want to rule as a god. That's why he always says so. He wants freedom, not to control. It's ironic to think that such a freedom-loving man could be in the possession of the god fruit, the fruit that can control everything. A fruit that could change the properties of its subjects. Maybe Luffy made himself stretchy, that's why he can stretch. He didn't know it was called the gum gum fruit, he was just told that as a young child. Didn't you think it was weird when Doflamingo was fighting against Gearforth Bounce Man, and he made a point to mention that Luffy was still stretchy and bouncy, even while covered in hockey. This fruit's not normal. It seems to be jailbroken. A fruit that has the power to control would certainly be sought after by Emu and the world government. A fruit that can erase history. A fruit that can change its own name. What other powers might await? Well, gods are usually described as omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. And as we get into some of these godlike abilities, obviously, we're going to get the tinfoil hats on. Because we're speaking about literal god-level abilities. So Luffy, you know, someday he might be all-powerful. He might be able to communicate telepathically, kind of like what he's done with Momo already. And um, omnipresent, he could be aware of everything. He could truly become a wisdom king. Maybe he'll be able to read minds and read virtues. That's kind of like what he did um, during the Skypea arc when he first meets Blackbeard. It's probably more like they. Although that's kind of a, an observation hockey type ability. Perhaps he'll gain the wisdom to see into the future and the past of all Joy Boy reincarnations. This is like the most advanced form of observation hockey. It's like observation hockey on drugs to become all-knowing and wise. Another power-up is the power to unite, kind of like Bello Betty. Luffy already does this pretty well, but I'm sure if you put it into the wrong hands, this power could enslave the human race, actually all of the races, the world, recruiting everybody to do his will. Perhaps as a god, Luffy would be able to control all elements, like lightning. Maybe he's the one that actually saved himself from his execution when that lightning struck. 
Could he create a sun? Or maybe drop a planet out of orbit for all we know? What if Luffy can create new devil fruits? With a jailbroken fruit like the chosen god fruit, anything could be possible. For his awakening, what if he can manifest fate? To make his will the reality, to speak it into existence. Luffy could end up finishing the series as the most powerful anime character of all time, because he's going to be a god. He creates destiny. He's the sun god, Nika. Thanks for watching and stay golden.